Hello and welcome to my Stuart Major Beam Rebuild. This is part 10 and it's called Mounting Decisions because the decisions really are mounting. And the first decision is what to do with this mounting base. Should I just turn it into a planter and put some garden plants in it or should I carry on with it? It's slightly warped, it's not perfectly square. But with the help of my belt sander and some brand new belts, I turn this slightly warped piece of wood into a very good base for a major beam engine. The bit of video that I'm showing here is only a fraction of the time that it took to get this thing flat. I was going back and forth between the belt sander and the main workshop many times. My workshop is split into two halves. This part of the workshop that I'm in at the moment is the dirty side of the workshop where the grinders are, the belt sander and various other bits and pieces that make a lot of mess. And the good thing about this part of the workshop is it's right next to an open door so all the dust and mess from there generally blows out of the door. Now back in the clean part of the workshop, clean but very untidy, I make no apologies for that, I just prefer to work in this chaotic way. My wife despairs and says she can't stand being in the place, which is not a bad thing really. Maybe it's because I'm not an engineer, but a musician, and musicians must be messy. The main engine bed plate is now sat on this box, in the position it's going to be on the finished thing. So what I'm doing, to make sure that if I remove it I can get it back into precisely the right place, is drawing round it with a pencil. And once I've got most of the way round it with this pencil, it occurred to me that this pencil is not very sharp at all. I went back to the belt sander and sharpened the pencil. That is much better. And now the line is far finer, and it will allow me to replace this bed plate on this wooden box in exactly the same position as it is at the moment. The accurate mounting of the engine bed plate to the mounting base is of paramount importance, because the flywheel bearing pedestal is also going to be attached to this mounting base. Now using a 3 drill, I'm making a pilot mark in the wood through the main mounting holes of the engine bed plate. These holes are 3 16 of an inch in diameter to take two BA studs, so I'm not drilling too far down with a 3 16 drill. By using a 3 16 drill, I'm making a very accurate mark on the main wood. So when I change the drill for a 5 30 seconds drill, which is tapping size for 2BA, I will get a very accurate hole. And as you can see here, with the 5 30 seconds of an inch drill fitted, I am drilling a much deeper hole than previously with the 3 16 drill. I'm going to tap all these holes in the wood with a 2BA tap. Time now to look at the brick covering on the outside edge of this box. And the first thing I need is a line to work to with the bricks. So using some panel pins, I'm just fixing a piece of scrap 4mm plywood to the top of the box. This 4mm plywood that you just see me fasten to the top of the box is only there to give me a datum for the bricks that I'm going to be sticking on there. And also to show accurately how many courses of bricks I need to remove to make the bricks level with the bottom of the base. In the last episode, when I showed the bricks like this on the side of the base, I thought I would have to take off one course of bricks, but having a look at these bricks in detail, and I thought they were like the Typhoc bricks that I also mentioned in the last episode, but no, they're not. They're extremely hard, they're more like tiles. You can hear this by the sound they make when you rattle them with a piece of metal. I tried drilling one with a small, ordinary high-speed steel drill, which just glowed red and melted. Even grinding these things on the belt sander is not a good idea, they just wear the belt. They do grind away, but it takes quite a long time. So by taking some measurements as you see here, I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to remove another course of bricks. And that will leave me one eighth of an inch, which is perfect. Because the main lower mounting board is going to be clad in floorboarding. Not real floorboarding, pretend mahogany floorboarding. And it just so happens that I have a good stock of eighth of an inch thick mahogany. Because I'm removing two courses of bricks from each sheet, I'm going to have a lot of these left over also. I could put them round the bottom edge, as you see here, on their edge. But no, that's not going to look good. I can sort of visualise the end thing looking like that and it would be horrendous. The way I'm going to do it is to cut some of this mahogany into strips and make floorboarding. And once the floorboarding is laid, it will look like the real thing. It occurs to me with this model, even though as far as a model goes, it's a large model of a not very large engine. And that's the reason for using these smaller bricks. 
I built a baseboard a while back for a Brunel Models Grasshopper beam engine, and I got the impression that this was a larger engine. Generally, full-size beam engines, if they're really big, are built into the buildings, or at least on many columns, not just a central column. So it seems to me that this size of brick is probably okay for the scale of this engine. You're currently watching me using two sheets of this brick material to cover the entire front side of the box base. I'm pushing the sheets together and you can't really see the join. What I need to do first though is get the exact length, so I'm putting a ruler at one end as you can see, and at the other end it's a different story, I'm using a pair of pincers to break off the end of the bricks, but the pincers actually nip off the end of the bricks perfectly, I suppose I could use a tile cutter but this tool does the job so well, I couldn't want for a better system. In the last episode, I was trying to look at the best way to get the corners to look right. Because these bricks are thin, then going round corners gives it away. One solution was to prefix corners made of either mahogany or brass and run the brick up to them. But in the end, I've decided to run the bricks all the way up to the edge and then use a piece of 16th brass angle to cover the join on the corners. It'll look quite good and it will protect the brick. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.